What's up guys, how's it going? It is Matt here. So if you guys have followed me, you know I've been looking for work and I've been looking for, for work in a field I'm very familiar with and that's uh, combat arms, military, that's kind of what I do. And I've been looking for kind of more of a stateside job and it's kind of tough to find one out here in this state by looking all over. And I just want to talk about, this is going to be kind of a little bit of a venting video, but you military guys are probably going to get a kick out of this as well. So let's get started. It's like this, in order to apply for like plant security or something like that in the state of Connecticut, you need specific guard cards, which makes sense. As a civilian, you need a guard card. They need to know that you have the capabilities to do that. They also requirement that you have at least some military background. And they say they recommend having seven to eight years of military experience to stay in these jobs. Another possibility is law enforcement backgrounds. You need either military or law enforcement or both with a college degree. In order to stay in guard duty, at a post and a big manufacturing plant or executive area or something like that. So they need all these requirements to stand these posts. I'm going to talk about the truth about standing posts and the honest requirements that you really need for it. Requirement number one, you have to be able to use firearms. Okay, You have to be able to know how to handle firearms, know how to clear malfunctions, know how to shoot accurately, and you, ha you have to know how to use your firearms effectively in a defensive situation. All right? You need to do that. The next thing that you need to do is you need to understand the whole concept of interlocking fields of fire. That is, one post for, it has their kind of cone of fire in that direction, the post next to it has their cone of fire next to it, and the post next to it has their cone of fire next to it. So all of you combined cover this massive area, you just all have designated areas that you have to do it. Third requirement, you have to have phenomenal communication skills, as in you need to be able to pick up radio and you need to be able to talk to someone else and let them know, hey, this is going on, I see this, something's going on. Call the COG, call the SOG, Corporal Guard, Sergeant of Guard, that's the military, military terms where it would be a supervisor, if you see something strange. Those are the main requirements that you need for combat arms, all right, for, for these positions and when it comes to like standing the guard duty and stuff like that as a combat arms man. Now, if something bad happens, you have to be able to call for a reactionary force and you might even have to do your term as reactionary force, which you show up on a post and if you need to, you put down suppress the fire on the target so it's no longer a target, right? Those are the pretty much the requirements for standing a post. However, according to these other places, there's other requirements. So I'm going to throw in the other honest acquire, you know, requirements that you actually need in order to stand post. First one is you need to be able to stay awake for hours on end. You're talking four to six, maybe eight hour shifts on end. You have to be able to stay awake for hours on end. So I'm going to teach you a couple classic, perfect, professional techniques that we use in the military to actually be able to do this. Technique number one, the hot sauce, hot sauce method. The way how this works, take hot sauce. There we go. Put a little bit on your finger. Technique two, the water technique. Technique number three, the beatbox technique. Dude, can you shut up? the ability to keep yourself entertained or of people before you entertained the entire shift. Simply do this. You write, how to keep an idiot occupied for hours. Look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down. Now the final realistic technique is you need to be able to write stuff down. Uh, you have to be able to write stuff down, be able to observe it, know what's going on in the area, be able to write down exactly what you see, the exact time, and get a little detailed if you need to. Not over, you're not writing a book, you just need detail about what you're seeing. Those are the honest requirements, what it takes for you to be able to stand post in a, whatever the situation is, whether it's a combat zone or in a uh, stateside zone. You, in order to stand post, you need those requirements to do it. So why does someone need seven to eight years of military experience when in their entire military career, they're probably standing posts throughout it nonstop all the time. Why do they need a college degree for, college degree for what? For standing posts and looking at things and writing things down? Last but not least, what does law enforcement being a police officer have to do with standing on a post for hours on end, watching what's going on, taking notes, and keeping yourself entertained for hours? 
Though that, 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 that's the truth when it comes to post standings. For all the companies out there that put these insane requirements in order for people to stand a post, even when they have a, a very set military background with background in combat, with, multiples, with, with experience when it comes to actually fighting itself has a background of that. When you, you don't think these people have the proper requirements to stand a freaking post. So who exactly do you need to stand these posts? All, all, all these all these uh, contractors out there. Who do you need? What requ What are you looking for? Are you looking for a tactical Navy SEAL Ranger Cav operator to stand a post for hours on end and make sure everything is good to keep an eye on things? Or are you perfectly fine with people that did it with their entire military career of standing posts when they weren't out there and they know exactly how to function? Anyway, guys, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me, and remember, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.